did you know that the Canaanite sun goddess Shapash is the Holy Spirit and the Canaanite high god El Elyon is the god of Christ? How did we get here? I'll explain all. There's no better place to begin than Genesis. Genesis references Elohim, making humans in their image. Then Elohim said, Let us make humans in our image, in our likeness. Let them rule the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the domestic animals all over the earth, and all the animals that crawl on the earth. The first commandment implies that other deities exist. It just says not to have other gods before me. Well, for there to be a need for this commandment, other gods would have to exist. Psalm 82 further confirms the existence of a pantheon of deities. Elohim takes his place in his own assembly. He pronounces judgment among the gods. How long are you going to judge unfairly? How long are you going to side with wicked people? I said, you are gods. You are all sons of El Yon. You will certainly die like humans and fall like any prince. Christ directly quoted Psalm 82 in John 10:34 when the Jews threatened to stone him. This pantheon of deities was headed by none other than the Most High God, El El Yon, and this is what Christ was cryptically referencing. Here is another interesting excerpt. When El Yon gave the nations their land, when he divided the descendants of Adam, he set up borders for the tribes corresponding to the number of the sons of Israel. But Yahweh's people were his property. On one of the Dead Sea Scrolls, which are some of the oldest surviving Tanakh fragments in history existing before the birth of Christ, it says gods instead of sons of Israel. In addition to leading us back to the loving Most High God El, Christ brought back the worship of the Canaanite goddess Shapash, the Holy Spirit as portrayed in the earliest Christian text, was female. The language used to refer to it got switched to masculine later on. We know that the Holy Spirit is a projection of God, and, as revealed by Christ, El. It's an intermediary between El and his son. Shapash was one of the most important Canaanite goddesses, being the goddess of the sun and El's royal messenger. To mortals and deities alike, the word of El would be delivered through Shapash. The Holy Spirit is defined as an agent of divine communication. Shapash is just that. In the Ball Cycle, Shapash helped bring Ball's body from the underworld back to the land of the living. And when Jesus was revived, the Bible says the Holy Spirit brought him back, and it is the Holy Spirit that gives eternal life. Shapash is the intermediary between life and death, just like the Holy Spirit. Also, fire is associated with the Holy Spirit. For example, John the Baptist said Christ would baptize people with the Holy Spirit and fire. And remember, Shapash is the goddess of the sun. In the Bible, when Jesus was crucified, the sun reportedly stopped shining. Around noon, darkness came over the entire land and lasted until three in the afternoon. The sun had stopped shining. In the ball cycle, when ball dies, it explicitly states that Shapash stopped the sun from shining. The fact that the original teachings included feminine words when referring to the Holy Spirit in direct contrast to the masculine father and son shows that its gender actually matters and is relevant to its identity. To Christ, the Holy Spirit was a goddess. Thank you for watching, and if you're interested in learning more, you're welcome to check out my other videos and the pinned link to my free book.